Some of the most controversial topics in baseball between traditional and analytical fans has always been the things you can't quantify on a stat sheet. The intangibles, the things guys either have or they don't. Some mention the will to win as perhaps the best way to evaluate a player. If he wants to win more than the opposition, then he will find some way, somehow, to overcome any challenger that stands on the other side of the field. Talent that has always been debated is whether or not athletes can possess the ability of being clutch, whether or not certain Certain players can step up to the plate and deliver while others crumble under pressure. One of the main sources of research for this video, the book, Playing the Percentages in Baseball, by Tom Tango, Mitchell Lichman, and Andrew Dolphin, defines a clutch player as one who performs when the game is on the line. The question I wanted to answer is if it is possible for a player to elevate his ability in a situation when his team needs him more consistently than those around him. This topic goes much deeper than I initially thought and it led me to want to research as much as I could to find the definitive answer of whether or not clutch hitting truly exists. Before I dive into the stats, I want to present the difficulty in trying to analyze something like this. First of all, clutch situations are rare. The vast majority of players' appearances will be in non-clutch situations just by nature. By most metrics, an average player only sees about 30 clutch situations a year, thus making it very hard to accurately evaluate a player given a very small sample size. With small data sets, randomness can arise and cause a false sense of definitive proof for a belief or finding. This difficulty will come up in most studies of clutch hitting and will be discussed later. Another difficulty that comes up is everyone has a different definition of what a clutch hitting situation is. Some consider all opportunities with runners in scoring position. Some only consider late innings in which the batter's team is behind and has a chance to tie the game or take the lead. I will do my best to denote the exact situations in which the studies were evaluated, but most studies found similar findings in alternate clutch situations. And as always, we will all have our own biases when we reading these findings. I truly wanted to find the most objective answer to this question and hope you can keep an open mind with me. I want to first provide some of the stats used to evaluate players in situational baseball. There are many stats used, but some can have blind spots in places where others excel. Take for example two of the most commonly used stats to show a player's clutch ability, RBIs and batting average with runners in scoring position. A player is credited with an RBI in most cases when his plate appearance results in run scoring most commonly through a hit. However, RBIs do not count runs scored on errors, hitting into double plays, and a few other exceptions. Batting average with runners in scoring position is just as it sounds. The areas in which these stats fall short are opportunities and ignoring the game state. RBIs are dependent on the batter's position in the lineup and the quality of the hitter in front of him. A good leadoff hitter in an otherwise poor lineup would never come close to an average four-hole hitter on a very good team. The stat simply does not isolate enough of the individual skill to be useful in identifying a batter's skill. Batting average with runners in scoring position fails in identifying a clutch attribute due to the fact that it does not denote the game state in which the player gets a hit. A single with a runner on second in the first inning of a nothing-nothing game counts just the same as a walk-off grand slam while down three runs. Context is key with these stats and statisticians have made attempts to give context without making the calculations too much mathematical nonsense. Take for example, RBI percentage, created by David Pinto, calculated by taking the RBIs of a batter minus home runs to not count themselves, and dividing them by the amount of runners he had on base, including those on first, over whatever timeline you want to evaluate. While it may not be the most objective stat, it does add more context to the RBIs being generated by a batter by taking into account the opportunities he has been handed, rather than the raw amount of RBIs he drove in. But this also fails to consider the state of the inning. This is where we can look at something like batting runs above average by 24 base out states or RE24. It is quite the mouthful, but it is simple to understand. In any inning, there are 24 different combinations of outs and base runners. For example, you can have runners on the corners, one out, bases empty, two outs, runners on second and third, no outs, etc. RE24 takes into consideration the expected runs for the given inning based on the base out state before and after the batter's plate appearance. For simplicity, it weighs the same hit differently depending on the situation. RE24 
24 counts a bases loaded double more than a bases empty double because it does more to increase the expected runs scored in the inning. RE24 for one at bat is the difference between the run expectancy at the beginning and end of a play. For example, a runner on first, one out, has a run expectancy of 0.556. If the batter doubles, putting the runners on second and third with one out, then we would expect 1.447 runs from this scenario. The difference between 1.44 and 0.556 is 0.891 runs, meaning the double was worth 0.891 runs. Summing RE24 over all of a batter's plate appearances yields his season total RE24. Very similar stat to RE24 is win probability added, or WPA. First called player win average when Eldon and Harlan Mills ran thousands of computer simulations in 1970 to find the probability of an average baseball team winning in any given scenario and credits how much any individual on how much their performance impacted the outcome of the game. Doug Drennan, Keith Woolner, and Tom Tango, we'll get to his book later, further developed the understanding of win probability. Christopher Shea has calculated the win expectancy for every situation and provided them on his website, Walk Off Bach. But at the time of this recording, I couldn't find his website. The final stat before finally getting to the research done with all these stats mentioned is WOBA, a commonly used stat amongst sabermetric fans, but just to give a clear definition, MLB.com defines it as WOBA is a version of on-base percentage that accounts for how a player reached base, instead of simply considering whether a player reached base. The value for each method of reaching base is determined by how much the event is worth in relation to projected runs scored. For example, a double is worth more than a single. When looking at WOBA, you can just think in terms of OBP and you'll get the same picture. The stats discussed in the last section were used in multiple studies to determine whether or not a clutch player is observable and if this knowledge can be used for future strategy. The main strategy discussed in the book looked at the differences in players' WOBA in clutch and non-clutch situations. Clutch here being defined as any plate appearance in the eighth inning or later in which the batting team is trailing by one, two, or three runs. All other situations will be considered non-clutch. Going by this definition counts roughly 7% of a batter's at-bats as clutch situations, which means an average player will see around 30 of these in a given season. Due to the fact that the highest leverage situations bring the best pitchers, major leaguers tend to see an 8% decrease in WOBA in these moments, so any clutch WOBA greater than their non-clutch WOBA minus 8% is considered hitting well. Looking at the 10 best and worst clutch hitters from 2000 to 2003 using these metrics, the 10 worst clutch hitters actually performed better in the clutch relative to their non-clutch performance than the 10 best did the following season. Multiple studies since have found little or no correlation between clutch performances one season to the next. The problem is the sample sizes are just too small to get an accurate picture of a player. It is crazy to evaluate someone on just 30 to 60 at-bats and expect the production to remain consistent. Consistent. But that doesn't mean that clutch can't be observed over a larger sample size. A separate study that didn't just examine two seasons from a player, but instead looked at 848 qualified batters from 1960 to 1992 used an altered OBP stat that ignored intentional walks and credited players who reached on base by error with a successful plate appearance, found that about 1 in 6 players were able to raise their OBP skill by 8 points or more in high leverage situations, while a similar amount of players decreased by eight or more points. An observable difference, but perhaps not as significant as some would assume. The difference between a good overall hitter and an average overall hitter is three to four times that of the difference between a good clutch player and an average clutch player. More often than not, the best clutch hitters year after year are simply the best overall hitters. MLB Network did a segment on the clutchest hitters in MLB history and mentioned Ty Cobb has the highest batting average with runners in scoring position while leaving out the fact that he has the highest career batting average. Research has also found that every batter performs worse as a pinch hitter than they would as a starter. Pinch hitters receive a significant hit to their production, so if the goal is simply to win the current game and not get a young player experience against big league pitching, then the pinch hitter would have to be significantly better than the starter he is replacing. Players appearing as DHs have shown similar penalties to their production, but on average it is not as hefty, and variants show some play just as well as they would if they were playing the field. Overall, research has shown that clutch hitting is an observable attribute within players, but it isn't quite as big of a difference maker as some would make it out to be. Due to it having a small sample size, it is very susceptible to random variations and luck playing a part in 
and some timely hits. But given multiple years of data, sometimes requiring one's whole career, it is possible to point out who performed in high pressure situations while others would produce less. The book says, for all practical purposes, a player can be expected to hit equally well in the clutch as he would be expected to do in an ordinary situation. It is better to rely on someone who has a track record of overall success rather than poor overall success but amazing clutch performances. Many of the stats like win probability added or RE24 are better suited for seeing how much value a player had in the past rather than determining what kind of success he will have in the future. While they may not be great for evaluating a player's ability in the future, it does not take away the value the player added when their team needed them the most. Clutch plays create heroes and no matter what the stats say, players will be remembered for what they did when their team needed them most.